Probably one of the greatest tragedies uh, in Christianity today, I believe, is the apostasy concerning the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I honestly believe that those among us here who are really looking for his coming and yearning for it would be absolutely shocked at the masses in Christianity today who no longer believe in the coming of the Lord. They have jettisoned that from their thinking and their theology. They are not looking for his coming. They are saying he will not come in my lifetime. Our teachings now saying he's, he may not come for centuries. And so they have put away and out of mind the truth of his coming. We are seeing fulfilled right before our eyes the warning of Peter, the apostle. There shall come in the last day scoffers walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the sign of his coming? Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of time. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Makes me wonder if he's coming for those who are not expecting him. He said, for those who look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. There's a crown of righteousness waiting for all who are looking, yearning, loving his appearance. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord is coming. No matter what happens to the society, if you have ever uppermost in your mind that Jesus is coming at any moment, any hour, as he said he would, this is a motivation to holiness. It's a motivation to keeping focused on Jesus Christ, no matter what happens in your day and age. And we have a whole army of ministers in the pulpit today Preachers of peace saying, relax, you're okay, I'm okay, relax. The Bible says, he began to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Now this servant is not eating and drinking Christ anymore. He's not into the Word. He's bored with the Word of God now. He doesn't want to hear anything about the coming of the Lord because it's going to ruin his lifestyle now. Because you see, the world is creeping in. The spirit of the age is creeping in. This man's thinking is changing completely. I've got all the time in the world. And you know, a lot of Christians today are living for the devil and saying, well, uh, he's not coming right now anyhow, but if, if I get sick and before I die, I'll repent. Chances are you won't get that chance. Because only those who expect the coming of the Lord are feeding on Christ. What are you eating and drinking? Are you as much in love with Jesus this morning while I'm talking to you as you were a year ago? Are you as hungry for the Word of God or have you, Jesus put, have you put Jesus on the back side of your mind? He's back here somewhere and you say, Oh yeah, I believe Him, I trust Him, but you know, I've got all these things to do. I've got things in my life. And little by little, you eat and drink the other things of this world and you are, you are not focused now on Jesus. You are not eating and drinking. And the only reason you would do that is because you really don't believe Jesus is coming soon. If you really believe Jesus is coming at any moment, and you believe what he said, be ye ready. You see, when you're not eating and feasting on Christ, you don't expect his return. You turn to the world. You turn to its filth. Eating and drinking with the drunken. It means that you're eating the same food, drinking the same food that's intoxicated the world. They are intoxicated now with sports and entertainment. And not one thought of spending an hour alone with Jesus in the Word. There's an intoxication with sports in the United States that is absolutely demonic. There's nothing filthier than soap operas. Nothing. Nudity, filth, adultery, fornication. And I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you, that if you're sitting there when Jesus comes and you're watching that film, how do you expect to come out of that cesspool suddenly into the arms of Jesus? Come on now. How do you sit there and watch those talk shows 
that are nothing but slop from the very pits. Absolute filth. And you're going to feed on that, you're going to drink that drink, you're going to eat that food with the drunken and get intoxicated with this. This is life and death. If you think I'm putting on a show, then you're missing the whole point. What are you eating and drinking from that computer? Come on, what are you eating and drinking? And I say this for the young people especially. Ten years ago, I couldn't have preached this. This is where we're headed, folks. And I'm telling you, it's going to... You are going... If you are drinking and eating at the wrong table, if you start eating and drinking with the drunken, you will not make it. I say it again, you will not make it. If, if we had the full vision, we would all be on our feet weeping or on our knees and on our face if we knew what's coming. First of all, you must have in your home a renewed vision of the soon return of Jesus Christ. There has to be a cry in you so that your children hear it. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Thank God for family. Thank God for friends. Thank God for his blessings. But there's, this is not the real world. This is not the real world. We're going somewhere for eternity. This is just a little piece of eternity cut out called time and space to repent. A little time and space to, to, to prepare our hearts for the glory of God that awaits us. I am not living for today. You're going to stand before me. It's appointed unto man once to die after this, the judgment. And folks, we're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to stand before him as believers. Some of you are going to be damned. You're not going to be saved. The Lord's going to bind you hand and foot and cast into outer darkness for an eternity. And your hell is going to be so much more terrifying than the heathen. Because the Bible says, to whom much is given, much is expected. Sadly, some of you who can look at Brother Carter, you can look at me, you say, I love my pastors. I love these men. But you're still going to hell. You're going to die and go to hell because you have never fully yielded. You're still not... You don't even pick this up at home. You're not into it. You never get alone with Him and seek Him. You're not eating and drinking. Christ. You've not become that faithful, wise servant. You still speak doubt. You speak unbelief. If you loved him and you believe he's coming, you'll run to him. The Bible says absolutely the law is meant to bring you to such a state of helplessness and terror that you're driven to Christ and his mercy. And preaching like this is, is intended to become a law to you that exposes your laziness, exposes everything that's unlike Jesus in you to produce a holy terror that you would say, I will run to his mercy. His mercy is for those only who have already been convicted of their sins and admit I've sinned and, uh, and know that their sins are going to damn them. And once you know that, you run to Jesus, and that's when His mercy is given to you. He floods you. That's when the peace, that's when the miracle happens. And that's why there's not much conviction in the church anymore. That's why people are not really turning to the Lord with all their heart, because the law of the Lord has not been laid down as a mirror to convict them of their sins. There has to be conviction. And if you're here this morning and you're convicted, there's something turning and twisting in your heart. This wasn't to be cute this morning. This is to tell you if you've been sitting there drinking smut, lay it down. I'm telling you, you're going to go to hell. Folks. This is not a game. It's your eternal soul. And I will not stand before my Maker. I'll not stand before my blessed Jesus. I tell you, I will not. 
and have anybody's blood on my hands. When I stand there and you were there beside me, I'll let you know in all love, I told you. Sunday morning I preached about his coming. I talked about that stuff you were drinking it was going to damn you. I prayed that you would turn. I begged you. I pleaded. I did everything. I used God's hammer. I used his law. I used his mercy. 